if something can come into being from nothing, if that is possible, then it becomes inexplicable why anything and everything doesn't come into being from nothing. Think about it. Why don't bicycles and Beethoven and root beer pop into being uncaused from nothing? Why is it only universes that can spring into being from nothing? What makes nothingness so discriminatory? (laughs) There can't be anything about nothingness that favors universes because nothingness has no properties, right? So nothing or uh, nothing can constrain nothingness either uh, because there isn't anything to be constrained. So I think Amy's point is, is a very persuasive one, namely it becomes utterly inexplicable why just anything and everything doesn't pop into being out of nothing if this can happen. Now I've heard atheists respond to this argument, Amy, uh, in the following way. What they'll say is, well, Premise one is true of everything in the universe, but it's not true of the universe. It's true for everything in the universe, and that's why you don't have Beethoven and bicycles popping into being out of nothing. But it's not true of the universe. But I think you can see that this is just the old taxicab fallacy again that we talked about with regard to Leibniz. You can't dismiss the causal principle like a cab once you've arrived at your desired destination. Uh, Premise one isn't just a physical law of nature, like, say, the law of gravity, which only applies in the universe. Rather, it is a metaphysical principle, which applies to being as being. It applies to being as such. And therefore, it governs all of reality, all of being. And it would be, then, arbitrary to say that the principle does not apply to the origin of the universe, that it can somehow spring into being without a cause. Now, at this point, the atheist is likely to retort, all right, all right, if everything has a cause, then what is God's cause? And I must say, I am surprised at the self-congratulatory attitude that uh, accompanies this question many times on students' lips. They imagine that they've said something really profound here and uh, really offered a knockdown argument when, in fact, all they've done is misunderstand the first premise. Premise one does not say everything has a cause. It says whatever begins to exist has a cause. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Everything that comes into being has a cause. But something that's eternal wouldn't need a cause because it never came into being. And notice this isn't special pleading for God. This is what the atheist has always said about the universe, right? The universe is eternal and uncaused, and therefore there is no cause of the universe existing. So this isn't special pleading for God. This is exactly what the atheist has typically said about the universe or about matter and and energy. But the problem is, as we'll see, we now have strong evidence that the universe is not eternal in the past, but that the universe did have a beginning. And so the atheist is backed into the corner of having to say that the universe just sprang into being uncaused out of nothing, which I think is absurd. Any comment or response to that second consideration? Yes, David. The uh, response that... that the, the, the principle applies for things in the universe but not uh, of the universe, I still don't think gets them out of the, the dilemma of why other universes aren't popping into being all the time. Well, now that's a good point, David, actually, because in contemporary cosmology where it uh, will often talk about other universes as, as bubbles that form in a sort of sea of, uh, in this vacuum uh, energy, you could have a universe that would form right in our midst, you know, and, and annihilate us. It, it, there could be a universe that would pop into being in our universe. Uh, and yet that hasn't happened. Why not? So, yeah, that's a, that's a point that would still need to be asked. But I want to question it at this even more fundamental level because I think that they're thinking of the causal principle as being a sort of physical law of nature rather than as a metaphysical principle. And that's just a fundamental misunderstanding.